We're in the kitchen today because I watch a lot of food videos and cooking tutorials and kitchen documentaries, and I've started to realize that the process of making a dish reminds me a lot of the experimental process, and the kitchen reminds me a lot of the lab. And I don't just watch these shows, I also really enjoy cooking and baking myself. And so I've started to notice a lot of parallels between my moments in the lab and my moments in the kitchen and how curiosity plays a role in both. So today, in collaboration with Mark KGAA Darmstadt Germany's hashtag always curious initiative, we're going to talk about some of the parallels that I see between the lab and the kitchen. Now each endeavor in the lab or the kitchen begins with a recipe or a protocol. You don't just start wildly throwing ingredients together in the kitchen, you find a recipe and you see what's worked for people before and then you try and make that. It's the same thing in the lab, you don't just start wildly trying experiments, you go and you find a protocol, you see what's worked for people before and then you try it. Now in both cases, you're likely gonna have to try a few times before you get something right. I don't think people typically step into the kitchen and make a perfect souffle on their first try. And it's the same thing in the lab. You often don't get a new experiment to work out perfectly on the first try. So you try it and then you adapt it to your situation and then you try it again. And it's the same thing in the kitchen. If you make a dish and it's too salty, you'll note that, you'll adapt it to have less salt and then you'll try it again. Now this flexibility and determination in the face of burnt dinners and failed experiments is I think critical to the experiences of both. I think that if you're not failing in either place, you're likely not trying anything new or innovative or curious. Sure, you can probably make perfect box mac and cheese over and over again, and there's nothing wrong with that. But are you really trying anything new or innovative or curious if you don't see what happens if you add vegetables or hot sauce? And it's the same thing in the lab. If you keep doing the same experiment over and over again and keep getting the same result, then you're probably not gonna discover anything new. So you have to keep an open mind and try new things. And sometimes this works out really well. Uh, one time in the lab, I was trying to see what would happen if I amplified a gene in a new way. And it was great, it turned into a new assay that I could use to test how well my future experiments were working. But sometimes, uh, it doesn't work out so well. College-aged curiosity about what a wasabi-flavored buttercream would taste like led to some inedible cupcakes. Now that process of adaptation after successes and failures in the lab often takes the form of notes. In the lab, this is a formal lab notebook, and I wish I was that organized in the kitchen, but most of my adaptations sort of take the form of these sort of sad and stained post-it notes uh, from use over many years. But that doesn't mean that everybody is disorganized in the kitchen. I think of, you know, the well-organized, carefully curated and put together recipe cards of our grandmothers. Curiosity is great, but I think that taking advantage of it by documenting it is where you really start to build that foundation for future experiments. Now beyond the more meta ideas about my kitchen and my lab lives, there are a lot of really physical similarities between the two as well. I mix things, I heat things, I wait, I mix again. I monitor things at certain temperatures, and sometimes I really do think that just a different flick of the wrist or careful touch can make the difference in the final product. Both places also involve specialized equipment for certain jobs, from handheld tools to large machines. And all of them are important for the final product. And sometimes those machines can be used to offload some of our work as well. There are pipetting robots in the lab that can really precisely load plates, and my mixer back there will, you know, mix bread dough for me as I walk away and go do other things. And so this makes me think about the future of working in both of these places. And I'm an optimist about it. I'm not worried that robots are going to make me obsolete in either place, but I actually do hope that robots and machines might be able to help me work in both places in the future. I've joked in a prior video about a pipetting robot taking over my job in the lab, but really, if I'd had something like that, it would have done the more repetitive tasks for me and so that I could have gone off and done more reading and writing and thinking creatively about actually doing the science. It would have been a big help. It's the same thing with the mixer back there. 
just because it can help to offload some of that work, I can step away from something and focus on something more creative like video making. But what about you? What do you think the future of work is going to look like in your field? You can go to the link in the description box down below to share your vision of the future of work as a part of Mark KGAA Darmstadt Germany's hashtag always curious initiative. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video. I hope you sort of liked my thoughts about the parallels between the lab and the kitchen. Go forth, do science, and be cozy this winter with some baked goods. That's not half bad. <laughs>